Kubernetes is constantly receiving updates almost every single day. Being an engineer and looking after a Kubernetes cluster means you probably have to keep your Kubernetes cluster up to date. Now with a lot of software tightly integrating with Kubernetes, it means that every upgrade will probably bring some deprecations. Today we'll be taking a look at what it takes to monitor a Kubernetes cluster in 2022 with Prometheus and Kubernetes 1.23. We'll take a look at all the components needed. We'll create a Kubernetes cluster, deploy all the components and check out the dashboard. But more importantly, I'll show you the strategy that I use to make sure I can deploy the latest version of the monitoring components for the latest version of Kubernetes. So even if you're watching this sometime in the future, you should be able to use this as a strategy for future versions of Kubernetes. Prometheus is a metrics aggregator. We can configure Prometheus to scrape metrics endpoints of various systems. Grafana is a dashboarding tool which looks at Prometheus as a data source. We can visualize all our metrics in Grafana to see how our cluster is performing. Now there are many endpoints for monitoring Kubernetes. Majority of these endpoints already come with the cluster. Other components will add so that we can get extra observability. Let's take a look at the source code. So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a monitoring folder and in the monitoring folder, I have a Prometheus folder with all my guides on Prometheus, including Kubernetes. In the Kubernetes folder, we have a readme showing how to monitor Kubernetes using Prometheus. I have all my old guides here and today we're going to be taking a look at Kubernetes 1.23. And if we go into that, that guide will link us to the 1.23 folder. And as you can see, there's a readme in there, which is the Kubernetes 1.23 monitoring guide. So in this demo, we're going to create a cluster with kind. We're going to install the Q Prometheus components, which uses the Prometheus operator, deploys all the manifests, and then we're going to view the Grafana dashboards. So be sure to check out the links down below to the source code so you can follow along. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a Kubernetes 1.23 cluster using a product called Kind. Now, Kind is a very useful utility used by the Kubernetes community to test Kubernetes in Docker containers. It allows us to run lightweight portable Kubernetes clusters in lightweight Docker containers that we can use for testing. So the first thing I'm going to do is change directory to my monitoring Prometheus Kubernetes 1.23 folder. And if I do Alice in that folder, you can see we have a kind.yaml. Taking a look at the kind.yaml, you can see this is our cluster definition. We're going to have one master and three workers. And this is to showcase how to monitor multiple worker nodes in Kubernetes as well. So to spin up that cluster, it's very easy. I'm going to say kind create cluster. I'm going to give it a name, call it monitoring. And I'm going to pass in an image for 1.23.1. It's a version of Kubernetes I'm using and the kind YAML configuration. And I'm going to paste that to the terminal and that will go ahead and spin up a Kubernetes cluster in Docker we can use for testing. And when that command is finished, you can see it created our cluster. I can say kubectl get nodes and you can see we have one master and part of the control plane and three worker nodes. Now, before you continue, it's important to understand what the Prometheus operator is. If you're new to Prometheus, check out my link down below to my Prometheus guide. The Prometheus operator is used to manage Prometheus instances so that you don't have to deploy them yourself. We're going to deploy one Prometheus operator and then we're going to use that operator to deploy two Prometheus instances. Now writing and maintaining configuration for Prometheus is a pain. That's why there is this thing called service monitors. A service monitor tells Prometheus what services in Kubernetes to monitor. So if you have an arbitrary deployment with some pods running behind it and you're exposing a service to that pod, you can create a service monitor that uses a label selector to select the service. And then in Prometheus, you can use label selectors to select the service monitors that Prometheus needs to consume. That'll tell Prometheus what service endpoints to start scraping to collect metrics. And that is roughly how things are stitched up. 
Now, fortunately, there is a Prometheus operator community on GitHub, and they maintain all the manifests under the Q Prometheus repository. There are raw YAML manifests as well as a Helm chart that you can use to deploy all of these components to your cluster. But more importantly, before deploying anything to Kubernetes, we'll want to make sure we have a compatibility matrix. So if we scroll down here, we can see there's a Kubernetes compatibility matrix. If we click into that, we can see what version of Q Prometheus supports what version of Kubernetes. So this helps you make important decisions when upgrading your cluster. As you can see, there are two version compatibilities here. So 1.19 is compatible with 1.20 if you are using release 0.7. So this allows you to deploy the right release to use as a stepping stone for upgrading your cluster, as there's always some sort of backwards compatibility here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at release 0.10, which is for the latest version of Kubernetes 1.10. 23. So this is an important strategy to use when you want to build out your monitoring for future versions of Kubernetes. Now to get the manifest, it's really, really simple. What I'm going to do is run a lightweight Alpine container and mount all my source code into the container. So I'm going to say docker run minus it mount this current working directory into the container on a folder slash work. I'm going to set that as my working directory and I'm going to run Alpine. So I copy paste this. And this is because I want to do some things in the container that I don't want on my machine. The first thing I'm going to do is just add git. So I'm going to say apk add git. This will install git inside of the container. And next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shallow clone of that Q Prometheus repository, but specifically release 0.10. That's the one that's used by Kubernetes 1.23. So I'm going to say git clone depth one and the URL to that GitHub repo. And I'm going to pull in the branch, which is release 0.10. And I'm going to clone it to the temp directory. So I copy paste that that'll clone it into slash temp. So now I have this GitHub repo inside of the container. To view the files, we can say ls minus l slash temp. You can see we have all the files here. Now we're not interested in all of these files. What we're interested in is the manifests folder. That is where all the Kubernetes YAML is to deploy this entire stack. Now to view the manifest, I can say ls minus l slash temp slash manifests. If I run that, you can see everything is in here. So we have alert manager, black box exporter, Grafana, cube state metrics, a bunch of service monitors. We have node exporter. We have our Prometheus instance, we have the Prometheus adapter and the Prometheus operator, as well as a bunch of RBAC role bindings. We also have a setup directory. The setup directory contains all the CRDs that is used by the Prometheus operator. So what I want to do is go ahead and grab this manifests folder and put it into my GitHub repo so that we can take a closer look. So from within this container, I'm going to say CP minus R for a recursive copy. I'm going to copy the manifest folder folder into my current working directory. So I paste that. And because my current working directory is mounted in, you can see we now have a manifest folder on the left here. And these are all the files we've just copied in. So on the left here, you can see all the manifests I just showed alert manager, black box exporter, all the way down to node exporter, Prometheus operator, as well as the Prometheus instance. We also have a setup directory, which is all the custom resource definitions as well as the namespace. So if you deploy the setup directory, first, it will create this namespace, the namespace is called monitoring, and it will create all the custom resource definitions. And then when you apply the remaining bunch of YAML, it'll go ahead and deploy all the components needed to monitor your cluster. It's also important to note that the Q Prometheus repo also has a quick start section, which shows you how to go ahead and deploy all the stuff. You can see they say here that you need to apply the manifest setup directory first, and then wait for all these custom resource definitions to be applied before applying applying the remaining manifests folder. So now we're done inside this container, I can go ahead and exit out. And to deploy this, it's extremely simple. All I'm going to do is say kubectl create minus F, and I'm going to apply the setup folder first, copy paste that to my terminal. And you can see it's gone ahead and created the custom resource definitions because Kubernetes doesn't know what an alert manager is. It also doesn't know what a pod monitor or a probe or a Prometheus or Prometheus rules, service monitor or Thanos 
house rules. These are all new objects that the Prometheus operator will use to monitor our cluster. Remember to check out my Prometheus guide down below where I go into much more detail on all these components. Now that we have all the CRDs in place, we can go ahead and deploy the manifest. So that's very simple. We say kubectl create minus F and we apply the manifest directory. That's as simple as that. That'll go ahead and apply all those components. And if I immediately go kubectl in the monitoring namespace get pods, you'll see all the components that are being applied. So go ahead and run that. You can see there's a black box exporter, Grafana, kubestate metrics, node exporter, Prometheus adapter, as well as the Prometheus operator. Now, once this Prometheus operator is created, it'll start looking at those custom resource definitions. And because we've deployed a Prometheus instance and a bunch of service monitors, this Prometheus operator will go ahead and deploy two Prometheus instances and it'll take all those service monitors and configure the Prometheus instances so that they can start scraping. Now, the most important key components here are cube state metrics. Cube state metrics is like a metric server that gets all metrics from pods, such as CPU usage, network, disk IO, memory usage, and so forth. There's also node exporter. Node exporter is one of my favorite because it is supplying all the metrics of the entire node. Node exporter provides rich telemetry of what's happening happening on your node. So if you have a troublesome pod, you can use node exporter to find out if there's any performance issues on that node itself. And then we have the Prometheus operator, which basically helps us maintain all the Prometheus instances. And then there's Grafana, which we'll take a look at in a second, which helps us visualize all of these metrics. Now, if I waited a couple of minutes and I do get pods again, you can see all the components on our up and running, including two Prometheus instances, alert manager as well. And these are all the components you need for the basic monitoring of Kubernetes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new window and I'm going to port forward to Grafana to check out the dashboards. To do that, it's very simple. I say kubectl in the monitoring namespace port forward to a service called Grafana on port 3000. That is because I don't want to make my Grafana public. So I set up a private port forward endpoint and this allows me to port forward and access Grafana. The username and password is just the default, which is admin admin. And for this demo, I'm just going to skip creating a new password. And the first thing we'll want to do is come over to the settings and look at data sources. And we can see that we have a Prometheus data source here. Now there is one caveat. If you click this Prometheus data source, you can see it's monitoring this Kubernetes service, which for some reason, if you hit test, you'll find that it'll eventually time out and it doesn't work. I'm not sure why this is, but I have a fix for it. Now, ideally it should just work out the box, but for some reason it doesn't. It's very very simple to fix it. If you run kubectl in the monitoring namespace get service, you can see that there is this Prometheus KAS service. That is the one that's set up in Grafana that it uses that as, as a data source. But that one is not working. There's also a service which points to the exact same pods, which has two endpoints for our Prometheus pods. So I'm going to use this service instead. And it's very easy to change this. If we go to our manifests folder and we look at the dashboard data sources.yaml, it has the link to that service right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to the Prometheus operated service. Go ahead and change that. And I'm going to save that file. So to fix that, it's very simple. I say kubectl apply minus F and I apply that YAML file. That'll go ahead and update that secret, which has the endpoint fix. Then what I need to do is restart Grafana so that change can take effect. So I'm going to say kubectl get pods and see that's my Grafana instance over there. I'm going to say kubectl delete lead pod and I'm going to take the name of Grafana pod paste it there that'll go ahead and delete the Grafana pod now if I do kubectl get pods you can see I'm getting a new Grafana instance which will have that fix and now that that's up and running and ready we can run this port forward command again so I'm going to paste that to the terminal and I'm going to go back into Grafana under data sources you can see now my change has been affected I go down to the bottom I say test and the data source is working now I can go back to the home page and we can take a look at all the dashboards. Oh, yeah.
Now, before we take a look at the Grafana dashboards, it's more important to understand how these dashboards are populated. How does Prometheus get all this telemetry? To understand that, let's jump into the Prometheus instance. Now, if I do kubectl in the monitoring namespace get pods, we can see that there are two Prometheus instances and they are interfaced by a service. If I do kubectl get service, we have this Prometheus operated service, which exposes port 9090 that we can use to access access the UI. So to check Prometheus is very simple. I say kubectl port forward and I port forward to that service on port 9090. Go ahead and copy paste this to the terminal. And now we can access the Prometheus user interface. Now the first thing we want to do is go to status and go to targets. And here we can see all the service monitors that the Prometheus instance is configured with. So you can see here that the Prometheus instance scrapes alert manager, it scrapes black box exporter, core DNA, is Grafana, Cube API server, Cube state metrics, the Kubelets, as well as Node exporter, Prometheus adapter, and Prometheus also provides metrics to itself as well as the operator. Now, the most important ones here are the API server. If you're managing your own Kubernetes cluster and you have a lot of webhooks running, you may want to monitor the API server. Cube state metrics provides telemetry of all pods, such as CPU, memory, disk IO, and network. And then the kubelet is what's running on every node. It has telemetry about containers running on every node. And then we have node exporter, which provides rich telemetry of the actual nodes that running our workloads. So if we take a look at the service monitor and use node exporter as an example, you can see if I click this one, it has four instances that it's scraping. So there are four endpoints here one for every node. We have three worker nodes and one master node. Now, how does Prometheus find these endpoints? To understand that, what we need to do is check the service monitors. So we say kubectl in the monitoring namespace get service monitors. And you can see we have a bunch of them. All of these should appear on that Prometheus targets page. So you can see we have a service monitor called node exporter. And if I say kubectl describe service monitor node exporter, it'll tell me about that service monitor. And you can see if I do that, it has a selector matching labels of a service. So it's looking specifically for for Kubernetes services with these labels. And if I do kubectl in the monitoring namespace get service, you'll see that we have a node exporter service that has those labels on it. So that is basically how Prometheus is configured. So that provides you with all the basic components needed to monitor a Kubernetes cluster. Now it's important to note that Prometheus stores all this telemetry in memory. That means if Prometheus dies, you lose all your metrics. Now you can set up persistent storage to write this stuff to disk. So in case your Prometheus instance restarts, you can still load all of this data from disk back into memory. But for most companies, this is sufficient enough because most companies uses remote write to write these metrics into third-party applications such as Sumo Logic, Datadog, New Relic, and other third-party metrics providers. That means if Prometheus is restarted, you still have all your telemetry sitting outside of your cluster. So hopefully this video helps you deploy the latest version of monitoring components to the latest version of Kubernetes, and also gives you a clear indication of how this stuff is stitched together, how it works, and give you a strategy on how to keep your monitoring up to date. Remember to let me know down in the comments what sort of videos you like to see in the future and as always like and subscribe hit the bell and if you want to support the channel even further be sure to check the patreon link down below or become a youtube member and also check out the community link down below and as always thanks for watching and until next time peace